Hey guys, welcome back to another video and in this video I'm going to share you how to set up multiple JavaScript packages into a single repository or we say the mono repo package architecture using YAN workspaces. I'm sharing this with you as I'm recently working on a project which is using a mono repo approach. It is very important if you are working in a tech industry then you should know what is this mono repo approach is as a lot of tech giants like Facebook and Google are using this approach. So if this sounds interesting then watch the video till the end. Also make sure you subscribe my channel and press the bell icon so that you don't miss the videos like this one. So let's get started. Alright guys, so before we start doing this setup, let's understand a little bit about what is this mono and multi repo is and how does they differ from each other in terms of packages and project structure with some slides. So a multi repo means for each package you have a separate repository and it has its own node modules, package JSON file and everything that only belongs to this package. No sharing of dependencies with other packages. On the other hand, a mono repo means that you will have multiple JavaScript packages in one single repository, which has one main package JSON file and one node modules, which is shared among the packages. Let's see the folder structure of each multi repo and mono repo to get a better understanding of what I said just now. So this is a multi repo admin client. It's a package and this package has its own node modules source folder where all the development work is done and the package JSON file which contains all the dependencies related to this admin client package. On the other hand, we have an another package which is a web client which has its own node modules source folder where we do the development work and its package JSON file for dependencies. So these both packages have separate repositories. So that is why it is called a multi repo and also both the packages have their own node modules. That means there is no sharing of dependencies among them. Now let's see how the mono repo folder structure looks like. So in a mono repo you have a single node modules and you have one root package JSON file which will contain all your workspaces or all your packages. And then you have a package folder which contains your actual JavaScript packages. Each package like the web client or the admin client has its own folder structure which is a main package JSON and the source folder where we will do the development part. And all the dependencies in node modules is shared among both the packages. So you don't have multiple node modules for each package. You have a common node modules and that can be shared among both the packages. Apart from that, the code from web client can also be shared with the admin client. So that is one more benefit of using a mono repo approach which is very fast dynamic to use and avoid the repetition of node modules dependencies. So we can create this work packages using two package managers. Either we can use yarn package manager or we can use the node package manager. The npm version 7 has introduced the workspace in it but yarn supports the workspaces from 1.0 version itself. So now let's jump into the Visual Studio code and create the yarn workspaces. All right. So now we are in my Visual Studio code and I have an empty rep repository which is the mono repo and we will be using yarn to create the workspaces. So before we go, let's check that whether you have node.js installed in your machine or not. You can just type node hyphen V and check that you are getting the version or not and similarly you can check for your npm version as well and the next thing is if you have your node and npm install or if you don't have installed then I have a video how to do the installation of node.js on your machine I will add the link in the description below or you can directly click on the card above and jump to it directly once you have installation of the node and npm next thing is we will need yarn so if you don't have yarn installed on your machine then again you can simply install via npm install yarn hyphen g uh, and you just hit the enter and yarn will be installed all right so now we have node yarn and npm installed the first thing we are going to do is i'm going to create a package json this package json will be my root package json file and inside the package JSON, we are going to keep a private. So we want this repository to be private so that it don't get 
published and it is very important that you keep your repository private then you can add the name of your repository so the name of my repository is mono repo then we can add the workspaces so we will be creating two workspaces one is the admin client and another one is the web client so i'm going to add admin client and the next one is the web client all right so now i have created the workspaces as well now let's create these packages admin client and web client so to create the packages i'm going to create a folder here as an admin client and i'm going to create another folder as web client and inside each of the folder we are going to create a package json so i'm going to go to admin client and i'm going to do yarn init hyphen y so this is going to create a package json file and similarly for the other one for the web client let's do the yarn init hyphen y so now we will have both the package json files and the next thing we will just create a index file and in this admin client i'm going to write an export module so i need to export something from here which can be used in my other package like the web client so i'm going to do export an arrow function and i'm just going to do a console log here so console dot log and i'm going to write i am from ad admin client all right and then we will create the same index.js file in my web client so let's create an index.js file we want the function we created in the admin client should be used in the web client so this is where the mono repo approach is very helpful and very useful that you can actually use some packages or some functions which you have created in other packages so i'm going to just write constant admin func and I'm going to write require and my package name. So my package is admin client. So now I'm adding something from the admin client. So I need to add the dependency of the admin client in my web client. So I'm going to add a dependency here and the dependency is admin client and my version is 1.0.0. .0 .0. All right, so now I have added the dependency as well. Now let's go and let's run the yarn install. So I'm going to clear this. And I'm going to write yarn install. And this is going to install the all the dependencies. So all the dependencies have been installed. Now you will notice that we don't have multiple node modules. Uh, in the admin client, I don't have any node module. In the web client, I don't have any node module. I have only one node module, which is in my root directory all right now we have installed the dependencies now let's try to execute this index.js file and see that whether we get the function from the admin client or not so i'm going to do node index.js and you will see that i i'm getting that i am from the admin client so the mono repo helps you to share the dependencies you have a common node modules and you can also share the functionality between the packages so the other thing I want to show you that if I go here in the index.js and if I change something, then I don't need to recompile my code. If I just run it, then it will be taking the new changes automatically. And one more good practice is the naming convention. So if I go to the package JSON here and right now I don't know that from which project the admin client is coming on so one good approach is the naming convention and what we can do we can write at the rate here and the name of your project so our name of the project is mono repo so i'm going to add the at the rate mono repo and slash so this is a good naming convention which is being followed in most of the projects so if i go to the admin i'm going to add this here and i'm already added here and i'm going to add this here as well and here as well all right and now i'm just going to do a yarn install all right and now if i try to run it then i'm still going to get the same results 
So this is one good approach. Let me show you some of the GitHub repositories of some projects which are using the mono repo approach. All right. So this Facebook create react app is a example of a mono repo approach and you will see that all the packages are in this package folder. So in this packages folder, you will see all the packages that are being uh, used in this mono repo. And similarly, TypeScript ESLint is one of the other example and Babel is one of the example. So a good approach is you write at the rate slash and then you write your package name. So you have your project name and then you have a package name. But one thing in common you will notice that they all have their packages into a packages folder. So that is a one good uh, thing which we need to do that we always keep all our packages in the packages folder. So let's change that in our folder as well. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a new folder. So I'm going to add a new folder and I'm going to give a name as packages. All right. Now inside this packages, we need to add the web client and the uh, admin client. Okay, so now I have added my both the admin client and the web client in the packages and then we just need to go here and change uh, this part. So I'm going to remove this and here we will just write packages slash asterisk. So everything that is under packages folder will be included in the workspace. Now if I try to do yarn install again, then all right, so we have done the yarn install and now let's try and check. So now if I want to run this, it I will go to packages inside the packages. I'm going to the web client and inside the web client, I'm going to do index.js and it's giving me an error. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to delete this whole package. All right. And now I'm going to create it again. So I'm going to do an yarn install. All right, and then now if I try to run it, then it's going to give me the same result. I am from client admin client. So this is what the project structure you should have if you are using a mono repo approach. You have packages, then you have admin client, web client, you have your main package JSON. And the last thing I want to show you that suppose uh, I need to install a bootstrap as a dependency and that bootstrap should be used by a web client or the admin client. So what I can do, I can go to a web client can go to packages, then web client and I will just clear it. And inside this, if I want to install the bootstrap, going to do yarn add bootstrap. All right, and if I hit enter, then you will see that this is going to add the bootstrap, but this will not be added inside the web client. Now, if I in the web client, you will still see that there is no node modules in the web client. And if we go to the admin client, there's no, but if we go to the node modules, we will see the dependency of the bootstrap and we can use this dependency in uh, in admin client, in web client. But if I go to the package JSON, you will see that a dependency is added here but it is not added in the admin client because we did the yarn add bootstrap statement from the uh, web client directory. So I hope you got an idea of how to set up the mono repo and how to work with the packages and what are the standard naming conventions which are used in the industries while working with the mono repo. So in the, in the coming video, we are going to see that how we can set up a mono repo with our react project or the react native project. Uh, I know this is not giving you the much exposure or the idea, but uh, yes, you have kickstarted with the mono repo, how it looks and how we can set up using the yarn workspaces. So I hope you like this video. A thumbs up is appreciated. You can also connect with me via Facebook or Instagram. I will add the link in the description below and make sure you subscribe my channel and press the bell icon so that you don't miss the videos like this one. So thank you. Thanks for watching.